In this video, we'll be exploring phototransduction, or in other words, the process by which photoreceptors, rods and cones, convert light into neural signals. We'll look at the process in a rod. It works essentially the same way in a cone. Just to orient ourselves, we can see here that we have the outer segment of the rod. There's the main part of the rod with the nucleus. Inside of the rod, we have these disks. These disks contain the chemicals that are sensitive to light. We'll take a closer look at that. This area over here represents a magnification of roughly this area on the rod. What we see when we look at this is that the disk, which you can see right here, is made up of, it's supposed to represent a phospholipid bilayer like the plasma membrane of a neuron. So we have essentially a disk that's made up of this phospholipid bilayer with a hollow center. Embedded in the disk are proteins. These proteins uh, are important because they contain the chemical, which you can see here in green, that actually reacts with the light. Let me add the labels, and you can see this is an opsin protein. This section that responds to the light is known as retinol. Here, this represents a G protein. And then we can see this circle over here, which represents an enzyme. The red circle represents a chemical called cyclic GMP, which sits in a binding site on this channel. This is a ligand-gated sodium channel, but this time the binding site for is inside of the neuron rather than outside, and it opens up in the presence of cyclic GMP. When it opens, sodium can flow into this neuron because of both the electrical gradient and the concentration gradient. So these are the various parts of the neuron, of the photoreceptor, that we need to be concerned about for phototransduction. I'll now explain what is happening uh, that starts the, or at least what's happening in the dark, so we can understand what is going to happen in the light that causes us to be able to see. So let me remove a few things here to provide just a little bit more room. The first thing that we need to understand is that this segment of retinol in the dark is actually curved. That's why I've drawn it with the hook here. When retinol is curved, that means this G protein up here is not activated. The retinol has to straighten out in order to activate that G protein. So in the dark, with the retinol curved, the G protein will be inactive. Because the G protein is inactive, this enzyme is also inactive. When the G protein is activated, that's what turns the enzyme on. But in the dark, since the G protein is not activated, this enzyme is inactive. The enzyme, when it is active, breaks down cyclic GMP. But because in the dark it is not active, that allows the cyclic GMP levels to rise. As the cyclic GMP levels rise, the cyclic GMP combined with the receptor site on this ligand-gated sodium channel. When it binds, it holds the sodium channel open. So in the dark, the sodium channel will be open. As we've already discussed, because the channel is open and there's an electrical gradient for sodium towards the inside of the cell, and there's a concentration gradient for sodium towards the inside of the cell, that means that sodium will flow in and depolarize the rod. Just like any other neuron, depolarization leads to an increased release of neurotransmitters. So, in the dark, because the retinol is curved, the G protein is not activated, the enzyme is not activated, cyclic GMP levels rise, cyclic GMP binds to the channel and holds it open so that sodium can flow in and depolarize the photoreceptor causing it to release neurotransmitter. Those are the things that are happening in the dark.